A pro amnesty group returns to Texas. It's January 11th, 2024, and these are your headlines. You heard that correctly. A pro amnesty organization is once again rearing its head into Texas politics, endorsing three different Republican candidates for the Texas House. That group, it's the Libre Initiative, along with its partner organization, Americans for Prosperity, you may have heard of them, is heavily funded by the Koch Network, which has reportedly led so-called immigration reform efforts in Washington, D.C. We know what immigration reform efforts in Washington, D.C. usually look like. Uh, the kind of reform this group advocated for includes granting permanent legal status for those in the country illegally. Now, specifically marketing itself as a limited government advocacy organization targeted towards the Hispanic community, the Libre Initiative echoes and really emphasizes these pro-amnesty positions on their own issues page. This is literally their words. It's taken from their website. They talk about creating a permanent solution for dreamers. They say people deserve certainty and the ability to plan their lives, yet Congress has taken more than 20 years to address this ongoing issue with a permanent legislative solution for dreamers and those with temporary protective status. They go on to say we need a law that provides such certainty, including permanent status for dreamers and TPS recipients, many of whom have lived in the U.S. for over two decades and have been contributors to our communities and our nation's fabric. Does that sound like a conservative Republican group to you? But they go on. They say that we need to address the undocumented population. Undocumented, literally the language of the left. Saying today's immigration system keeps too many decent, industrious people from fully participating in the American experience. For those who want nothing more than to build a better future and contribute to our society, a permanent legislative solution, amnesty, is needed. We support a system that recognizes contributing members among the undocumented population, affording individuals an opportunity to come out of the shadows and get right with the law. On Thursday, today, State Representative Mano Diala touted the group's endorsement. It was actually the first time I had seen a lawmaker in quite a while celebrate the Libre Initiative. He said in a post on social media that he was honored to be endorsed by an organization, quote, dedicated to empowering the Hispanic community and advancing freedom-minded policies. Additionally, Libre has endorsed State Representatives John Luhan and Janie Lopez. During the last election cycle in 2022, numerous Republican candidates in Texas, including state senators Mays Middleton, Pete Flores, and Tan Parker, soundly rejected the group's endorsement because of their pro-amnesty position. As of right now, Diala, Lujan, and Lopez have not responded for comment. A local liberal activist and three-time former Dallas City Council candidate has filed a petition to recall Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson. The effort to recall Johnson, of course, stems from the mayor switching his political party affiliation last, uh, last year from Democrat to Republican. Peters also claims that Johnson has missed multiple city council meetings. That's Devonte Peters. And he has until March 5th to obtain more than 103,000 signatures from registered Dallas voters in order to send the request to the city council, who will then decide whether there should be a recall election. And Devonte Peters, who filed the who is uh, filing the petition says uh, told the Dallas Morning News that he filed the petition with the city secretary's office on Friday and has received more than a thousand signatures in favor of removing Johnson as of Tuesday of this week. Now since Johnson's party switch he has faced other demands to resign but despite those demands Johnson said he plans to remain mayor until his term ends in June of 27. In his re-election campaign back in May of 2023, he garnered 93% of the vote while being challenged by a declared write-in candidate. He will be unable to run for another term due to term limits. Did you know you can watch Texas Scorecard on your TV? If you have a Roku or Apple TV device, download the free Texas Scorecard app. There you can find all the great Texas Scorecard video content like Daily Headlines, The Luke Messia Show, Heads Up, and Scorecard Documentaries. Download the Texas Scorecard app for free on Roku or Apple TV. Lastly, we have a brand new piece from our investigative unit looking at an audit, an internal audit, 
showing problems at a state agency's unit tasked with helping combat human trafficking. These findings come as Texas remains ground zero in the fight against sex trafficking, which is, of course, a component of human trafficking. How did this start? Well, a source claims that the troubled unit has since been disbanded and its duties and members have been reassigned to different departments. This is a story you're not going to get anywhere else. The 15-page audit conducted by Weaver and Tidwell found only one of the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation's anti-trafficking unit's three objectives earned a strong rating. The other two earned an unsatisfactory rating. The reported flaws include a need to prioritize referrals from law enforcement as well as improve communication with law enforcement and other team members, document maintenance, and referral tracking. The audit also noted that retention of investigative inspections document was inconsistent. The audit's report ratings ranked areas on how their goals and objectives conformed with the departments, whether agency goals and objectives were being met, and functionality. Two areas earned an unsatisfactory rating, meaning they were found to be weak and frequently falling below expected levels. You can get the full story at texasscorecard.com.